Good evening, guys. Um, I have with me Dr. Carolyn, who is ranked one in uh, NESS Gynec Oncology, and it's a great honor to have you here with us, ma'am. Uh, this interview you'll have to kind of bear with us, guys, because the internet is a little bit erratic at ma'am's place. Ma'am is currently serving in Assam, uh, helping in the far out areas of this country, uh, and you know, despite an extremely busy schedule uh, and a, and a, uh, and a family balance. That every single sort of every sort of obstacle, ma'am has cleared the exam very successfully, and we at Socials are extremely proud to have you with us here. How does it feel? Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, it's like yeah, uh, uh, no words to explain uh, how happy we are. But uh, yeah, we are really happy and delighted now hearing the results. Actually, it is a surprise for me, and I thank God for this opportunity as well. Great, ma'am. Ma tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you do your undergraduation, your postgraduation? Yeah, sure. So I am basically from Tamil Nadu, and I did my undergraduation from uh, Government Medical College, uh, Kanyakumari Government Medical College, and I passed out in 2012. After my MBBS, I had uh, joined as a non-PT in CMC Bello. Okay. And after my 10 months of my non PG uh, residentship, after that I had uh, got into for my DGO and uh, following which into, uh, into MS also. And I passed out in 2017. So since uh, 2017, I've been working in, uh, in this hospital, which is in the southern part of uh, Assam. It's a mission hospital, uh, Makunda Christian Leprosy and General Hospital. So I've been working uh, here for the past five years. And why uh, you're having a good career? Uh, um, and uh, suddenly, how did this love for gynec oncology come? Yeah, I actually like the speciality right from my uh, post graduation days because in the CMC itself we have a special unit. Um, uh, apart from the general gyne on gyne gynecology, we have a separate unit oncology. So, as part of it, after during our DGO course and the uh, MS course, we have to rotate in the in the gyne oncology unit for two months. So, and uh, I personally like the subject. And now I've been uh, for the past five years, I've been working in a busy obstetric setup. So now, now I felt that I may have to uh, pursue, uh, I mean, go out of the obstetric setup for some time and. Uh, pursue the next step of my speciality great ma'am it's, it's a real inspiration hearing from you about your service at the mission hospital uh ma'am um, can you just tell us a little more about your preparation how did you prepare and how did you find the time to you know kind of study between your work yeah so yeah the place where i work is really a very um, the busy clinical work uh, uh, we have around like 500 to 600 deliveries per month uh, with a single consult with a single consultant. But we get a lot of help from our junior doctors and a nursing team. So they are like my backbone, right? My nursing team is my like my backbone in the labor room. So so yeah, the clinical load is really huge. And uh, yeah, by I could find time basically after my clinical work and after my family time. I usually take time over during the night, like after 10 or 11, I start and I I uh, have a like study team time maybe for another three, four hours in the night. And more than even more than that, I sacrifice some of my time for sleep and uh, I actually study. How do you find the motivation? <laughs> okay, motivation. I am personally a little academic oriented person. So being in a mission hospital, uh, like we don't have uh, so much opportunities for academic uh, platforms, right? Like we are, we are so much oriented into the clinical work. So, okay. so I usually keep my keep me updated, and uh, I I like to write competitive exams uh, as part of my uh, like uh, from uh, from my childhood itself. So even in um, here also, I had finished my MRCOG when I was here because just to keep me updated of the uh, of our course so that that is one motivation and the second thing is uh, i had a plan we had a plan like uh, once um, at one point of time we may have to do some specialization sub specialization so so 
so that was another motivation which made me to prepare for the exams and give the exams Now, how did the search test app play a role in your preparation and how did you use the mcqs and uh, along with your usual direct and hacker preparation yeah Uh, so when i wanted to know wanted to prepare prepare and give for the exam it was like uh, i didn't have any guidance of how to prepare uh, where to start it because oncology dani oncology itself is a vast specialty so actually i was focusing on the upcoming neat ss uh, where i have to read both gynae oncology and the reproductive medicine part and the general obg uh, but yeah, the when the neat ss uh, dates have come so i thought i'll just give a try for gynae oncology as such then if i don't get in maybe i will give my exams for need uh, so to start my gynae oncology preparation it was like um, you are nowhere right i am not in the oncology i mean i am not practicing oncology for the past 5 years like i am totally into obstetrics and general gynae so uh, so my knowledge about oncology is not that far so i thought i will just i was just going through some videos of the past uh, ran toppers the videos from such tests and other uh, centers coaching centers like dr uh, chandrima dr aishwarya's uh, we did interviews i have seen so i just got a glimpse of where to start where to prepare and all those things so the, subsequently i heard about the search tests and um, i had uh, i had actually subscribed only the mcqs because we don't have a proper set of mcqs for gynae oncology in any other platform so i thought i'll just subscribe for the uh, mcqs and um, i had prepared uh, i had went through berak and hacker in and out almost the i have covered almost all the topics in berak and hacker and uh, and i when, once i finished reading i used to go back to the mcqs of the berak and hacker and i used some amount of sakshi arora's mcq bank also especially the gynae oncology part and uh, that's how i prepared i think that's a, that's a beautiful insight You were telling me about Dr. Fau, Dr. Alka's uh, videos, certain videos on YouTube very useful. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I have actually when I was hunting for some resources in the initial period to start my preparation, I had I had uh, seen Dr. Alka's video on uh, um, lecture class on ovarian cancer in the YouTube. So I think that also um, streamlined me towards how to read, uh, like as an MCQ point of view, and to know about the subject also. because i was not i don't have a good knowledge or a good base like only my post graduation days i have read oncology i'm sure, sure your current preparation would have you know kind of enhanced your knowledge significantly yeah yeah now <laughs> yeah yeah uh uh ma'am one last final question yeah. where do you see yourself 10 years from now what do you want to be doing uh maybe uh, 10 years down the line uh i think i'll be working in some part of uh, uh, some part of uh, really need a needy part of the rural some part of a really uh needy part of india where i can enhance or improve the lives of many women through my oncology services gynae oncology services was there any uh, sort of social motivation for you to take because you have worked in a completely a social welfare setup uh, uh, for uh, throughout your career and from your interactions from my interactions with you i have you know kind of realized that you have some sort of a lofty goal while pursuing this particular degree it's not just earning one more degree and uh, it's not just you know kind of uh, a degree to earn some sort of money so that's what i could kind of sense from you so uh, i think i think uh, i think my my opinions are right because you kind of want to serve back and give back to the society quite a bit you're right in that uh, actually um yeah Uh, the i have chosen this specialty because i have now been working in the rural india for some time i am i am basically from south i born and brought up in south uh, this part uh, this part of the place where i am working is um, totally rural where the women don't come up with their come up for, uh, come up with their problems and women don't show up if they have any problem health related issues because the priority towards health is very less in this a group of people and uh, and we i every day in my opd i see women of women coming with ca service young even young women recently i had seen a 27 year old lady uh, coming with ca service yeah uh, they they just blow, come up only in the later stage where we can't operate only we can do a, i mean some sort of treatment many, yeah many cases we can't do anything also 
such uh, in uh, um, such state they come so i think the definitely preventive oncology or uh, preventive services like cleaning has to reach these women in this parts of the country also so i feel like somewhere around somewhere down the line i may work in some places where i can strengthen all these services i think i think the very very honorable very honorable intentions because uh you want your skills to be utilized where it is needed the most and i think that's a very lofty and a very admirable uh, intention ma'am uh thank you so much ma'am for here being here with us today uh it's been a great pleasure having you i hope you continue to inspire many young women to pursue oncology and to serve the women of this country in and you know kind of utilize your skills uh for the benefit of entire humanity thank you so much ma'am Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having having me here. Thank you.